Let's go to anatomical references, which basically refers to different names that you need to learn in order to describe a movement or describe a body position. We will also look into plane of motion, which is basically how your body is designed to move. And in each of these plane, we will also look at what are the joint actions that can happen. And once you learn all of this, you will be able to analyze exercises. You will know what are the movement in each joint, and you will know what are the prime movements. All right, now let's look at anatomical references over here. We've got a list of words here that I'd like you to look at it two by two because they basically mean the opposite meaning. So the first up, we've got anterior and posterior. So anterior means the front, posterior means the back. So when you see these words, you need to know what it means. Next up, we've got superior and inferior. Superior means on top, inferior means the bottom. So if I tell you to look at the superior angle of your scapula, I'm referring to the top of your scapula. We've got proximal and distal here. So if you're going to look at the word proximal and distal, let's say your body. Proximal means closer to the middle. Distal means further away. Superficial and deep. Superficial means the surface. Deep means it's inside. And last up, we've got medial and lateral. So I'd like you to look at your body, my body in two halves. Medial means closer to the midline, and oh, the next one, lateral means away from the midline. So we've got more. Over here, we've got cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. They all refer to your spine. So cervical spine is over here where your neck is. Thoracic spine is where your upper back is. And lumbar spine is where your lower back is. Plantar and dorsal. Planta refers to the bottom of your feet. Dorsal is the top of your feet and your hands. All right, now let's look at the next one. We're going to look into planes of motion, which is basically how your body is designed to move. And there's only three planes that your body is designed to move. First, we've got sagittal plane. So sagittal plane over here refers to any movement that you can perform. Imagine when you have a wall very close to you, both sides. So when the, the wall is right beside you and you're restricted, movements that can happen in that situation, we call that a sagittal plane movement. So for example, imagine there's two walls really close to you, you can probably perform a bicep curl. So a bicep curl on the elbow, that is a sagittal plane movement. If you perform a squat, your hips, your knees and your ankle will also be performing a sagittal plane movement. Next, we've got frontal plane. Now, the same wall that was beside you, I'm going to move it to in front of you and behind of you. So any movement that you can perform in this situation, we call that a frontal plane movement. So for example, lateral raise. So you perform a lateral raise, you will see that your shoulder joint is performing a frontal plane movement. If let's say you're performing a lat pull down, you will also see that if you look at your shoulder joint, your shoulder joint will also perform a frontal plane movement. And finally, we've got the transverse plane. Now, transverse plane, you will need to imagine the wall now cuts you into half, it moves this way, and for example, movements like rotational, you will see that your spine will move in a transverse plane. If you do a push-up, if you do a push-up, your shoulder joint will also be in a transverse plane. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you, any movement that doesn't occur in the sagittal plane or the frontal plane, most likely it's going to be in a transverse plane. Now, let's take our learning to the next step. Now, for each plane of motion that we've learned, we will now look at what are the joint action that can happen in each of these plane. So, we will start with sagittal plane. So, in sagittal plane, just to do a review, is any movement that you can perform when there's two walls right beside you. So, in this plane, we probably can only perform two joint action. It will either be a flexion or an extension. So when I say a joint 
flex or when we have joint flexion it basically means that you are closing up the joint and when you are extending the joint you are opening up the joint so let's look at some of the joints that you have in your body so let's say shoulder joint over here so when there's two walls beside you if you were to perform a shoulder flexion it looks like this and if you were to perform a shoulder extension it looks like this and you go more than that for that a shoulder hyper extension for your elbow if you close this up, we call that elbow flexion and if you open it up, it's called elbow extension. So let's look at the lower body now. If I were to flex the hips, if I were to flex the hips, I'm going to perform a hip hinge, closing up the hip joint. And if I were to perform a knee flexion, I'm going to close it up as well. And if I were to do it the other way around, I extend my knees, I extend my hips. Same goes to your spine. I have to close it up around my spine and for that a spine flexion and to open it up I call that a spine extension. Right, we did not forget the ankle joint. So for the ankle, there's something different. We don't call it flexion of the ankle or extension of the ankle. So over here, we use two terms over here. We've got planta flexion and dorsiflexion. So when you see the word planta flexion, you can imagine planting your feet down onto the ground. So that is basically you doing a calf raise. So if you do a calf raise, you need to perform planta flexion. And for dorsi flexion, dorsi, it basically means you can think of dorsal fin of the fish, or imagine you want to stop the door and you put up your feet. That's basically how you will do a dorsi flexion. So or if you, if you do a squat, so on the way down on the squat position, you kind of do, uh, decrease the angle between your tibia and your feet. So that is basically also a dorsiflexion. Next, we're going to look into frontal plane, which again, it is a wall right in front of you and a wall right behind of you. So the first two movements we have in the frontal plane, we've got abduction and adduction. So you can write this down, abduction and adduction happens in the shoulder joint and also the hip joint. So abduct, to abduct your shoulder joint is to take away. So when you perform shoulder abduction, it looks like this. And the other way around coming closer to your body, we call that shoulder abduction. For your hips, if you're going to move your hips away from your body, so again, this is hip abduction and hip adduction. Next, we're going to look into your scapula. This is a movement that probably only your scapula can perform. We call it scapula elevation and scapula depression. So it doesn't move any other way. It just goes up this way. Shoulder scapula elevation. And when it comes down, we call it scapula depression. And the last one for your frontal plane is inversion and eversion. So when you perform inversion, you lift the medial border of your feet and if you perform eversion, you lift the lateral border of your feet away from the ground. Now let's look at the last plane over here which is transverse plane. So any movement that does not happen in the sagittal plane or the frontal plane most likely is going to be the transverse plane. So the first movement we have in the transverse plane is called a rotation. Now I know in the English word rotation, it can mean anything, but in joint action, in joint action, we will look at rotation and we will understand that it means turning about the vertical axis of the bone. So I'm going to give you an example. So let's say if I want to perform a spine rotation, I'm going to look into my spine, and the vertical axis of my spine basically runs this way. So if I'm going to turn around the vertical axis of my spine, it's going to look like this. So this will be a spine rotation. Now, when we look at rotation, we can look at it in two ways. It can be either an internal rotation or an external rotation. So let's look at the shoulder joint, for example. If I were to move it towards the middle part of my body, this is going to be called an internal rotation. You see on my shoulder joint here, it moves this way. That's an internal rotation. If I move it the other way, that's going to be called external rotation. 
We also have protraction and retraction. You can also write this down. It's only happened in the scapula. So if I want to protract my scapula, basically I'm going to move my scapulas away from each other in a transverse plane. So you can imagine my scapulas over here, protract, is to move it away. It's just like how you would protect yourself. Or if I were to retract, I'm going to bring my scapulas closer to each other. So that's a protraction and a retraction. So just like when you do a bend over row, as you go down, you probably have a slight retraction and when you bring the bar towards your belly button, you have a slight retraction. The next one, we've got pronation and supination. So I'm going to need you to look at your wrist over here. So in an anatomical position, you can probably stand this way. If I were to pronate, I'm going to turn it down and I'm going to Say, uh, supinate your wrist, you're going to turn it up this way. And the last one, we've got horizontal flexion or horizontal adduction. So for this movement, I will lead you to look at your shoulder joint. So in a shoulder joint, you can perform flexion and extension which happens in the sagittal plane. If I were to lift my arm, I'm going to abduct my shoulders into this angle and I perform show, uh, this way and this way. I call that a horizontal flexion and horizontal extension. It can also be called a horizontal adduction and a horizontal adduction of the shoulder joint. For the hips, you can also perform horizontal flexion or horizontal induction in order to bring my hips up to this angle. I'm going to flex my hips here and from here I'm going to horizontally adduct my hips and horizontal adduct my hips. Okay, and one last one which is circumduction. So I'm going to move, uh, if I'm going to move my joint in a cone shape, I will call that a circumduction. So you can have a circumduction of your shoulder, you can also have a circumduction of your hip. Alright, so with this, all the terms that you've learned, it might be intimidating at first, but I like you to think of it as the language that fitness professionals use to communicate with each other when it comes to talking about movement. So don't worry about you not being able to remember all of this. It takes time. It's just like learning a new language. So once you learn it, you'll be able to describe movement using specific terms. For example, if you want someone to be able to bring the bar up to their chest as they were doing a bicep curl, you will know that that is called an elbow flexion. If someone tells you that you need to perform a bit more shoulder flexion, you will know that when you perform an elbow flexion, you need to also perform this movement over here, which basically means shoulder flexion. So I hope you enjoyed the video and you've learned something.